Hi, I'm Sharon Croft Caro, and it's all about me. It's not about me. It's about ME Ministry Equipping. Today, we're going to be talking about leadership, what it takes to be a great leader. Let's take a look at Psalm 23, verse 1. In this verse, the Lord says, or David says, the Lord is my shepherd. When David thought about leadership, he used the example that was closest to him, the example of being a shepherd. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's look at John chapter 10. I hope that you will read the entire chapter of John 10. But for now, let's just take a look at verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So Jesus was also using shepherd as a frame of reference for a leader. Instead of saying, I'm the great leader, he said, I'm a great shepherd. I'm the good shepherd because in that culture, they knew what a shepherd did. They knew what a good shepherd did. They knew what a, what a shepherd didn't. And so that was a good frame of reference for them. Well, the fact is that you and I don't live in an agricultural society. Most of us are not shepherds. Some of us, some of us have never been within 10 feet of a, of a sheep or a goat, and we never will. But we can still use this little allegory, this little metaphor as an example of what God wants us to do in our sphere of influence to be great leaders. And as most of us know, so many times in life, we can learn what to do by learning what not to do. So many times we have bad examples. And if we simply do the opposite of the bad example, everything's going to work out fine. So let's take a look at Zechariah 11, verse 16. Now, Zechariah 11, 16 gives us the example of the bad shepherd. And if we do the opposite of what this guy does, we're going to be great leaders. It says, the foolish shepherd will not care for the perishing. Again, this is Zechariah eleven sixteen. It says, he will not care for the perishing. He will not seek the scattered. He will not heal the broken. He will not sustain the one standing, but will devour the flesh of the fat sheep and tear off their hooves. So let's just work backwards, backwards through this and we'll see what a good shepherd does. First of all, we need to just get a little bit more information about the fat sheep. This is not like a physically obese, like ate too much sheep. This is um, a sheep that is physically and spiritually and emotionally fit. A person who is um, ready to go out in the world and do great things, influence people for good. Instead of attacking those people or devouring them with our words or with our actions, we need to encourage those people and get out of the way and let them move on in life and do great things. And we can just stand in the background and cheer those people on. If you do that, that's part of being a great leader. Next, we have sustained the one standing. There are people in your sphere of influence who are really just happy to maintain the status quo, just keep on doing what they're doing, just um, either survive or thrive from one day to the next to sustain what they have, just keep on doing what they're doing. Um, so as a great leader, you can give that person words of encouragement and pray for them on a regular basis just to help them attain their goals, help them keep on doing what they're doing because through that diligence, they are actually accomplishing something. So you need to encourage them to be diligent, to keep doing what they're doing because little by little, whatever their life goal is, they are making progress. Next, we have heal the broken. And there are people in your life, people in the, your spirit influence that are either physically or spiritually broken. They've had bad things happen to them and they need to be healed. They're basically healthy, but they have areas of life where they have been injured and they need healing. You can be on team Jesus to bring healing to those people and do your part for that. Next, we have seek the scattered. The scattered are people who are 
one step outside of your sphere of influence. Perhaps they're, they've been physically, mentally, or morally wounded. And they're one step outside of your sphere of influence. But you have the ability through your connections to reach out to that person, meet them where they are, and bring them one step closer to the Lord just by showing them love. I know that I've had times in my life where um, there were people in my life that were scattered and I needed for the people of influence in my life to reach out to those people and seek them and bring the love of Jesus to those people. Next, we have care for the perishing. There are people in your sphere of influence who are practically dead. They're like on spiritual life support, just barely making it. You can be one of the ones that Jesus has to bring the life support to those people to keep their ox to keep their spiritual oxygen tank going to keep their um, spiritual the the feeding tube going for that person to sustain that person long enough for some basic healing um, to take place so that they can get to the next level so that in a year or two, they're going to be the one who is standing. Um, they're going to be able to maintain their spiritual, um, physical, and emotional health. Maybe the year after that, they're going to be the ones who are ready to go out in the world and do great things. So if you work backwards from Zechariah eleven sixteen, you cheer on those who are doing great. You help sustain the ones who just want to maintain what they're doing that are really otherwise fine. You help heal the broken people in your life. You seek out the scattered. You reach out to those who are one step outside your spirit of influence and you meet them where they are. If you care for the perishing, if you are part of the life support for the people who are practically spiritually dying, you might never be recognized by the church organization. However, the, in the church organic, in the real body of Christ, um, you will have an influence. And Jesus Christ sees what you're doing. He's watching you. When he returns, he's going to look you in the eye and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So for a quick review, you've got three Bible verses on leadership. These aren't the only ones, but these are the ones we looked at today. Psalm 23, verse 1, John 10, verse 11, and then we have Zechariah 11, 16. You go to Zechariah 11, 16, do the opposite, and I promise you, you will be a great leader and a great equipper to get people ready to go into ministry or to do great things in their lives. Bless you. Think happy thoughts. I'll see you next time.